Hi everyone, this is Jay from Interview Query and the Data Science Jay YouTube channel. Today I wanted to go over product data science interview questions. What can you expect? Uh, why do we ask those kinds of questions in interviews? And when I say we, I mean companies. And then finally, what is the difference between product data scientists and then just a general product manager, right? And what kinds of different kinds of questions will come up? Uh, in the product side of your interview. So let's start out with just tackling at the forefront, why are there product data science types of interview questions and what does that even mean? And I would say that if you take it all away and you look at like the general product roadmap for any kind of product, specifically in tech, you'll understand that generally how it works is that for every single kind of feature or product, there's a team, right? There's a team of engineers, there's a team of data scientists, and then there's a product manager. And usually it isn't really a team of data scientists, it's usually one or two data scientists. And so essentially, because the product manager is in charge of the specific feature or product, they're basically setting up the roadmap, deciding what to build, deciding what to test, deciding what to launch, and then essentially the data scientist is there to help support with all the decisions that then have to be made and to measure a lot of the performance. And so if we wrap that back up and we say, what does a data scientist actually do with the product manager, right? The product manager will likely a lot of the times come to the data scientist and first ask for insights, right? For what the data scientist is gonna look into to basically find out more about the business. And then they're gonna look about pulling that data into maybe a dashboard. Then they're gonna collaborate on building this new feature for the product based on the data that they got from the insights, based on the data from the dashboard. And then they'll eventually build the feature with engineers. And then they'll have to either A-B test it or just launch it. And then once they launch it, they'll wanna know how it's actually performing, what could actually be done to make it better. Is it actually doing what we expected and then finally you'll probably build another dashboard to then display the metrics for all that information and communicate it on some sort of daily cadence right and so with that whole product roadmap lies within the data scientist actually does and I would say that generally a lot of that is collaborating on product, right? And so because data scientists are meant to actually have a lot of business intuition to be able to influence the product and where it goes, that's why we have these product data science interview questions, right? A lot of the time the product manager doesn't know what to actually ask or doesn't know what to look into. The data scientist is therefore the guardian of the data and the understanding of what's actually happening internally within the product, right? The product manager has a lot of intuition and they should be very data driven. But a lot of the times in terms of that extra complicated SQL pull or in general, like the extra insight needed into how the product is functioning and how it's working, that's kind of where they have to rely on the data scientists because of the times a lot of the product managers have all these different responsibilities in terms of communicating to the stakeholders, whether that's executives or higher levels, or even trying to corral engineers into like creating specs to designing these features or even like working with designers to figure out what the actual product would look like, right? And so as a whole, you can kind of imagine it as like a bunch of people surrounding this like product manager with a data scientist being one of those key components in terms of understanding and figuring out how to help contribute into the product roadmap. And that's why a product data science questions are so important because a lot of the times you have to internally know as a data scientist what you're looking for, what you're investigating, and exactly how you're supposed to measure the success of any type of product. So now that we've been given that background, I would love to then go into actually what the data science interview questions are because they actually are derived from a lot of the work that data scientists, product data scientists specifically do on a day to day, right? And I would say that generally there's probably around five to seven different categories of product data science interview questions. The first one is about investigating metrics, right? Metrics that are actually going up or down are there for us to actually be able to tell if the health of a product is doing well. And so a really common question that you'll get in an interview is, what happens when the feature X drops by Y percent, right? And so this is pretty common with almost all of the big tech companies and general companies that are within like the internet space because 
all these companies have general metrics that they track on a daily basis. And if one of them goes down, let's say for Facebook, it's like friend requests, then we wanna know why it's going down, right? We wanna know if this is actually important, something that we should actually dig into, and if it actually affects the business or not. And I would say that this kind of question is probably the most common question that gets asked in product data science interview questions. So the next step that we can go through is then the second most common question that I see, which is on measuring success. And this is basically taking a product and asking, how would you measure the success of this feature or this product, right? And so examples of this are, if we're looking at something like Facebook again, then we can say, how would you measure the success of Facebook Marketplace? Or how would you measure the success of Yelp reviews, right? And so these are all features of an overlying platform or product that we wanna know how successful it actually is. And the reason why is that if you think about the general product roadmap, a lot of the times we have product managers that then release these features and then they wanna know what happened, right? Like, did it actually improve anything? What happened to our business? Was it worth the time and effort to actually build this? That's where the data scientist comes in and has to come up with ideas in terms of investigating into the data to figure out exactly what happened when we released this feature, right? So it ties very much into the actual product itself and actually onto, onto the job training, right? Third thing is feature changes. So a very common question is, let's say we want to add, change, improve a new feature to product X, right? What metrics would you track to make sure it's a good idea? So here it's about a difference in terms of like the feature change, and then it's what metrics we also wanna track. It's very similar to the last question, except that the very small difference of a feature change or adding a new feature kind of changes the variables at play, right? Instead of now analyzing a product as a whole, we're now analyzing what a change does to a general product. Fourth question is a lot about metric trade-offs, right? And so if you're the PM for, let's say, Facebook, and you see that comments are down by 10%, but reactions are up by 15%, right? And reactions are those different kinds of likes that you can do, loves, hates, on posts, right? So we see these two metrics going in opposite directions. How do we deal with it, right? And these kinds of questions are pretty common when you're dealing with huge platforms like Facebook, Google, Amazon, et cetera, in which there are definitely network effects when you're actually doing feature changes or when different features are released or just in general when you're trying to analyze something, right? And we wanna know a lot of the times which one should we care about, which one actually matters, and which one do we prioritize. Lastly, I would say that a common question, but not as common as the last four that I just mentioned was on growth. So let's say that we wanna grow X metric on Y feature. How would we go about doing so? This is probably one of the less common interview questions because of the fact that it focuses around a company and a specific uh, area set as in growth which is primarily used for you know startups that are in growth mode or for companies that have a huge acquisition team. And so if you're interviewing for more of a growth role, they're definitely gonna ask you like different ways that you can think about how you could grow a specific metric or a specific product within a platform or business just to get a sense of your strategic skill, right? In terms of strategies for tackling all these questions, I would say that generally you should always think big and always take a step back before you dive in. I think the most common mistake that I've seen people do is to instantly dive in and then get pigeonholed into like one specific idea without being able to broaden themselves out again, right? And a lot of this time, it's about the fact that if you concentrate too much on a specific area, you won't be able to really think about the whole thing and take a step back and really like envision the full cycle of the product or what you're trying to actually do. And so, I would say that in terms of tackling these questions, always take a step back, ask for clarification before you actually jumping in and figuring out what you actually need to dive into. In terms of like more strategies for this, I'd love for you guys to check out more of the content on interview query to tackling these types of example questions. They definitely come up a lot and they kind of demonstrate a lot of your business skill set. I also want to do a part two video on this in terms of figuring out the best way to go about these types of questions because they're actually very, very common. And I think that they're necessary for everyone to just really understand and learn these kind of skills as you progress in your career. Thanks for watching everyone. And remember to like and subscribe to this channel for more content on data science interviews. Awesome. Bye guys.